Hello everyone and welcome back to my live streaming of KSP's Hard Career Mode. The video you're about to see was recorded on May 20th and has been edited for YouTube. I continued to try out the addition of music to the stream and I'm still messing around with that so apologies if the audio balance isn't great. Please follow me on Twitch to get notified when I'm streaming. I'm Tyler Rays there as well. I typically stream on the weekends at 1pm Pacific Time, 8pm GMT and also on Wednesdays at 4 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. GMT. And now, on to my commentary from May 20th. Okay, hello everyone. Hello, Jordish. I'm going to be continuing with career mode here. And uh, tell me how the music is, if you can. Kerbal rescues just don't seem... I wish we had a station building contract, but there doesn't seem to be a station building contract here. That'd be more my speed. Return to Kerbin from Orbit of Ike. Um, what, the, what about these tourists? There's five tourists here. God, these all have very complicated things to do. These, these are too complicated for me. I just can't quite figure this out. They, they all, these should all be separate missions. These, this should be one thing. I'm trying to figure out what the plan for tonight is, SU-25T. Uh, we're looking at the contracts. We don't have any active contracts. And, I, you know, I, I like satellites or stations. Those are straightforward, but we've only got really complicated stuff. This satellite contract isn't worth it. Neither is that one. Um, and I'm just musing that these tourists, they have very complicated demands. I mean, altogether this would rack up quite a lot of funds. And I guess there's no huge failure problem. Lots of time to solve, uh, to figure all this out. Uh, land on Mimus, land on Gilly, fly by Gilly. I guess they should be brought back, right? Oh, it says and back. It says and back. They have to be brought back. Okay. This is too much, I think. Then again, rescue Kerbal. R very low uh, failure penalty for the tourist one. Yeah, but I mean, this is this. Th there is no fun failure here. Apparently, that's weird for a contract. Mostly, they they have fun failures, but th th there doesn't seem to be one for this one, or at least it's not telling me. But then again, there's no overall reward. Um, then there's this Kerbal to be saved from Duna, which is, from Duna surface, which is tricky. But I'd sort of like all, each of them separately, but uh, getting them all lumped, I'd be stuck doing tours the whole time. Yeah. Uh, the problem is I don't want to get stuck doing tours. <laughs> and it looks like what this that's what this will make me do, but I guess, uh, since we have seven max contracts, let's pick it up. Uh, it's a curiosity. I know you want me to plant a flag on Eve, but that's not something I'm ready to do right now. Let's... Maybe we should try this return to Kerbin from Orbit of Ike. Let's see, what, what science have we done? We haven't landed a Kerbal on Ike yet, have we? Yeah, we haven't landed a Kerbal on Ike. Shall we start off with that? That's pretty simple, though. Take a tourist with you on a real mission somewhere, yeah. So, uh, maybe... Th does anybody want to go to Ike? Okay, well, this, this, uh, Suena's, uh, wants to go to Ike. Uh-oh. Suena wants to, wants to land on Eve. Oh, boy, that's gonna be a trouble. Have you done any aircraft in the... Ooh, okay. Yeah, uh, let's do that first, huh? Let's try and design an aircraft, just because I haven't done that yet. We've got some funds. We, we don't have to take up a contract yet. Um, I think the the Ike one will be uh, good, but let's start off with some aircraft. Um, and for safety's sake, let's start off with a probed, probe based contract. Uh, a probe based uh, aircraft. And so we, get, we got a nose cone. Okay, that's not a great nose cone, but it's an okay. Okay one. There's a nice fuel tank somewhere that sort of smooths out this, but we don't have it with us right now. Uh, we haven't gotten that unlocked. 
let's unlock this one for now. And I'm going to be wanting to test it out, but that looks horrible. Um, Alright, I know what to do. That's a good start, right? Let's think about this for a sec. Let's have avionics in front. That's pretty standard for, uh, for an aircraft. And... I guess we'll go... Let's, let's fly a jet first, since that's what we've got. So yeah, uh, we'll have the jet in the center. The jet's thrust is... Okay. 11 tons, about. Alright. And then... For kicks... I want uh, at least one LOX tank up front for balance, so that we can shift the fuel. Okay. And then... Single jet. This should require the wings to be in the back, which is fine. Oh, the mass is way off. The jet won't be able to handle that. I wish we had some of the smaller rockets, just for for our amusement. Okay, well, let's let's go with uh, aircraft design first. My favorite V-tail sort of thing. Okay, and... I guess canards up front. And the main wings. What do you think? Uh, swept wing or delta? You prefer deltas? Okay, two volts for delta. All right. So come on, come on. Uh, yeah, actually, let's go with that sort of idea. Circular intake up front. It is like the F-86 or, you know, one of those kinds of aircraft. Okay. Sort of like my GB. We don't need that one. Okay, well, let's configure the control surface proper properly. So, no yaw there. We'll give it pitch, though. I like having the pitch on the outside, too. No yaw, no roll. And these, uh, hmm, no pitch. Let's keep them yaw. Every time, I always go with the rotations that we don't need first. Okay, so we still need to move the... Air brakes. Air brakes, good. Uh, do we have air brakes, though? Um, I don't see them. I don't think we've unlocked air brakes yet. We could use solar panels. Let's just line this with some solar panels. Not a big issue when it comes to the center mass and center lift, but... Probably good for duration. Okay, and uh, we'll just force it. We'll uh, reduce the amount of... Now this is going to go like that. Then this like that. Then this like that. That's not too bad. Should be pretty stable. But we'll have only a partial tank up front. Okay, what does it tell me? Empty crew cabin. Yeah, I intend to do that. Ah, unused mod propellant. Don't need that. Okay, and a missing ladder. Well, we, we should prepare for having some crew, so yeah, let's get a ladder on. Oh, the part count is too much. Well, we can dump the solar panels then. Um, and mobility enhancer. I'd rather have one solar panel somewhere. We've got enough battery power though. Thirty parts exactly. 
Okay, well, let's try this out, huh? X1. Alright. We're just doing our first sort of aircraft thing in uh, this version so that I can get my feet wet there. So uh, we're going to fly this uncrewed and see how it all works. We've got a circular intake up front. A very simple aircraft. Hopefully not a problem. Yeah, that's a little bit better. This doesn't look weird. This looks fine. This is quite normal. Why would my X crash in uh, Great Conflagration? It won't cost us much money and it won't cost us a Kerbal, but uh, have I forgotten something? Oh, I did forget to uh, tweet Okay, let's uh, get yaw out of this one. Okay. That's one thing I don't want. Okay. Uh, let's go. How's the music balance? I've got the air intake. Air intake is up front here. No, no problems. It's uh, it's not the. I don't think this is the air intake many people use. I don't think they're used to seeing it on the nose. That's something very fifties ish. Oh yeah, yeah. I named my ship X instead of X. Yeah. Well, X works right. It's for experimental. Ex. Ah, uh, you right, right. X, I, uh, X as in former, former plane. Yeah, X parrot, if you will. Yeah, F eighty six. Yep, F eighty six. Uh, if it had a little cone in the middle, it'd be a, um, a lightning, one of the British lightnings. Crusader, be a thing. Well, welcome back, uh, thy lord root. Glad you consider it a treat. Hmm. Okay, well, let's turn a little bit this way. Not exactly effortless in its turning. Okay, let's see how far I can deviate from prograde without it flipping out. Again, no Kerbal in, so uh, I'm testing out its tolerances. Well, not bad at all. Okay, can you do a flip? No, yes, no, yes. Okay, good. Immelman. Right. Starfighter. F-104? You're talking about? F-104 doesn't have an intake on its nose. Does have a very small delta, very sharp delta wing. Okay, buzzing island runway time. Split S, I don't know that one. I, I actually don't play fighter games, <laughs> so I really don't know the maneuvers very well. Can you describe it? Yeah, actually I'd like to upgrade the island runway too. Just a little bit longer. I, I don't need it less bumpy, but just a little bit longer would be nice. Okay, obviously we're uh, gliding here. Well, not really gliding gliding. We're uh, not in level flight or anything. 
boarded landing five times today, went back to KSC before you remembered you had drag shoots. Ah, drag shoots would be, a, that would have been a good thing to put to the, put on the tail of this. We wanted to move the center of mass back. I was trying to think of what to do, but uh, didn't think of drag shoots. Split S, real life maneuver, yeah. Pitch up uh, some and then uh, dive down into a deep dive curving backwards. Oh yeah, okay, okay, I, I got that. Uh, we'll try it once we're uh, at altitude. Yeah, that's fine. I'm just planning to buzz the island runway, I'm not planning to land on it. No, I think this thing can probably land on it, but... But I want to try and find out how high it can go. And flying low? Okay. So, just for record, uh, we have no thrust, or at least it's, the engine is not fully shut down, but this thing is basically just using its descent to keep speed, and it's pretty fast, so we're talking about 200 miles an hour here. Okay, throttle up. Unlike the Immelman, the split S is used in actual combat. Immelman was used at times, right? I mean, presumably in World War One at least. Okay, so how high do you think I need to get before trying to split S? And do they throttle down when they do the dive? I assume they do, right? No, they don't throttle down? Okay. Okay, well, I don't know. Let, let's get into level flight first. It's uh, about forcing the other jet to pursue, right. Okay, so... Something like that. You slow as you ascend. Doesn't look like I need very much to uh, do that, but I'm not obeying G-forces. So, um, how violently should I do this? <laughs> I mean... Here, let me use fine controls. I think maybe it'll, be, it'll look a little bit more reasonable. So, let's say I go... Well, fine controls doesn't seem to be doing anything for me. So, anyway, let me uh, try it out, bound delta, and you tell me what I'm doing wrong. Okay, so the description was pitch up some, and then take a deep dive upside down. So, flip around and then take a deep dive, you want this way, and then pull up. Don't flip around or do flip around? Take a deep nose dive. Is it sort of like a game of chicken where you point down and then you pull up right at the end? That sort of thing? I don't know. I'm probably going to need to see a picture or something. Anyway, I want to do my high altitude test. So uh, we're going to high altitude here to see how high we can go. Think of a backward S shape. Okay, uh, that way... Oh, okay. Uh, so, let's say like this, and then... Like this... Nearly flip around... Like this... But then, at the last minute, let's say we were closer to the ground, we'll pull back up like this. 
that right? I'm going to continue up in my altitude test here, but... But if we were closer to the ground, it'd make more sense. Thrust is already going down. We're only at 46 and going... Okay, let's... Let's actually gain a lot of speed. Let's level out here. You level too heavily at the top of the S. You should be almost stalling. Okay. Alright, well, I'll get it right sometime. <laughs> but uh, right now, we're doing a different test. Um, so, you might have noticed how rockets tend to flip as we're getting close to the speed of sound. And I think I have that figured out. I think it's the way they apply drag close to the speed of sound, which is the Mach effect. You know, you get a lot of drag when you approach the speed of sound, and aircraft have a lot of ways of getting around that by the way they're shaped. Um, but I don't think it's being modeled properly here, and that's why the rockets keep flipping right at the time when you're right around the speed of sound transonic. I think that's a problem I've been having. I've also been doing launch tests. Uh, I've actually been using uh, KOS in a different install so that the launches are a little bit more systematic. And uh, so I've been seeing what the optimal sort of launch profile is. And basically, you know, the usual thing is if your thrust rate ratio is high, you want to start your turn sooner. Uh, but I don't think there's any reason to start the turn later than two kilometers as long as you're following the prograde vector down. We are attempting to gain some speed here, but it doesn't look like we're getting past the speed of sound. Alright, I just want to see how high we can get. I, I don't think we're going to be getting to the Mach 1.7 where this thing maxes out its thrust. Maybe that's only very low. I don't think we'll be able to manage it up here. So, not the most exciting thing I know, the, the slow drip up in altitude, but it'll tell us whether we can do some of the missions that we've got. Uh, well, I don't know, uh, at least the temperature scans. Though, I don't know if we have any temperature scans around Kerbin anymore. Okay, well... This is losing speed quite quickly. We know its stall speed is below 70 meters per second because of the flyby of the island runway I did. It didn't have any problem with that. I'm sure I could nudge it up pretty high. Well, a little bit higher than this anyway. But I want to get back home. Alright, let's see if I can land this thing. Um, well, I've never actually flown into the island runway in this direction. Well, while I don't have a Kerbal in, I probably should just try it out. Now, I don't have any air brakes on this, so I'm a little bit worried about stopping in time if I try the island runway, but... Again, this is sort of the time to test that sort of thing when I don't have a Kerbal inside the cockpit. We're not going to be using this design very much. It's more of a matter of seeing the limitations of the jet engines, which is all we've got right now. All we've got is the basic jet engine, and it pretty much sucks. <laughs> uh, I. I don't know, we'd have to unlock some some better radio rockets in order to make it worthwhile. Uh, probably the Rocket Max 2477s, that sort of thing. It's a shame there were no new jet engines with the update. Yeah. Um, it's a shame that there's... I mean, it's very complicated, really. The Because these are very powerful jet engines actually. I would like sort of lighter jet engines would be uh, very helpful. If I could have uh, radially mounted two smaller jet engines, that would be a thing. Yeah, it's a pretty quick uh, Today in Space History episode. But yeah, what I would think is, you know, uh, 
1.625 meter jet engines, small ones, sort of in keeping with uh, business jet kind of things. And you could mount them on the side on little uh, 0.625 meter uh, mini, I, I don't want to call them fuselages, but uh, pods. Yeah, radially mounted ones. And then have the rocket in the center. That's, that's a better design. Okay, I better just shut down the engine here, we're, otherwise we're not going to slow down quickly enough. Yeah, uh, that's what I did uh, when I was trying to get um, jet into space in Realism Overhaul. I had the DB-6, which had two radially mounted jet engines and then the main rocket in the center. And that was really the only way to do that properly need a nice light jet engine for that. That was for Earth, of course. This might seem tedious right now, but uh, it ain't for me. Right? Uh, trying to land a plane while streaming live is... It's not a thing I've done before, so... I'm a little bit nervous. So I have built a modded install without Realism Overhaul, it's uh, just normal Kerbin, but it's a cinematic install, and I've been using that to actually test the test the rockets uh, to get the launch profile. And that install is pretty cool because it only has KOS, and I'm using the script to test the launches, but it also has Telemachus, and so I can uh, see the data in a separate window while recording so that I can get a full cinematic view of uh, of the game. So, and I've got uh, ENB, I've got, uh, I don't know, do you guys know the mod Movie Time? Movie Time is a cool one because you can make it look like uh, color TV or black and white or sepia uh, just with a click and so that's a great little effect for recording that I haven't used yet, but I want to use. I'm not really confident that we've got the tools to build a really nifty aircraft right now. Bob Fitch uses it, uh, movie time? Okay. Once again, Bob Fitch has beaten me to it. <laughs> this is... This is a trend sometimes. Well, we don't have any thrust going on, so if we catch lift here, that's gonna be bad. Oh, come on. Oh, nuts. Oh, nuts. It's not slowing down quickly enough. Oh, abort, abort, abort. Oh well, that did not work out. We definitely need air brakes. I guess <laughs> even for a small aircraft like this, we need air brakes to slow down in order to be able to land, at least at the island runway. Well, I mean, of course, I didn't land right the best part of it, if, you'd, if you could say that. Uh, went a little bit far in. Let's see if we can get to really high speeds at low altitude. Let me just uh, bring it level, maybe a little bit further this way up, take the gear up. Make a really derpy RCS thruster VTOL. <laughs> uh, so, uh, use Verners, that sort of thing, maybe? We've got Verners, I think. Uh, we haven't unlocked them, though. But I don't think our... This is still career mode. I don't know if we want to... Because that's bound to cause disasters. 
Uh, we will crash into things with that, and I don't know if I want to spend too much money. Put two RCS thrusters in front in lieu of air brakes. Yeah, we could do that. Now this thing isn't gaining much speed at all. Yeah, but uh, and then we have to carry RCS fuel. Well, I, I guess we could just get the Verners and carry locks, but at least we upgraded the runway. Wouldn't want to try this on the bumpier runway. Okay, let's shut down the engine, gear down again. A little bit quick to be putting the gear down, but whatever. Okay, I'm on this away. Yeah. Yeah, uh, if, this was, if this was sandbox, and of course I do have a sandbox thing going too, uh, then I wouldn't hesitate to try some stuff out. Okay, our appropriate vector is deviating a little bit from... Okay, we're, we're at stall speed. Okay, we don't have to be going that fast. But stall speed is like 60 miles, uh, miles an hour. That's pretty low. Actually, more like 70. It was already deviating. Probably wouldn't have been able to turn at that speed. Let me get lower. Let's just have brakes on. Okay, we're a little bit right here. That's a small, small runway. Come on, thing, get down. Ouch. Uh, Crazy King. Looks like you've gone the wrong side of Nightbot. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, anyway, let's recover this. So our little drone is, I guess, successful. At least it survived. Didn't cost us any funds except for the fuel. Yep, 100% back, but 30 part limit. And how much does it cost to upgrade the space plane hangar? 450,000. Let's take a look at our R&D building. 